Hello everyone from Math 1340 Statistics. It's Professor Winson here again with a video on your Newton Alta homework, uh, section 2.5, Measures of the Center of the Data. So I'm just going to start right into the uh, right into the Newton Alta homework. You know where to find it, hopefully by now. Uh, you'll have your title, you know, the mastery bar, and all that. The objective. Great. All right. Again, you uh, hopefully by now you've seen enough Newton Alta assignments to know where everything is and what everything means. All right. So this particular homework has five objectives. So the first one I'm on here is find the mean from a frequency table. All right. Um, so remember the mean. Okay. We'll talk about the mean here. It's the first. Uh, time I'm seeing this objective, so as I've been saying every video, you know, I recommend that. Well, you know, if 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 you if you've read the OpenStax book and you've watched some videos and it's still unfamiliar to you, or you're still having trouble, um, or if you just want to get through the assignment this way, uh, click on More Instruction. Whenever you see an objective for the first time, and uh, we have find the mean from a frequency table. All right, now there's just a video here, so I'm going to go to a piece of paper and explain what the mean of a set of data is. And then I'll go through the, uh, an ex uh, the problem after this, the question after this, and, and show you how, how you do that when, you're, when you have a frequency table. Alright, so the mean, and you might have heard the word mean before uh, in your life, but uh, the mean is an example of one of these measures of the center of the data. You know, it's a value. It's a single value that you know estimates, in a way, where the center of all the data values you have are. Um, a way, the way you calculate the mean of a set of data, is you take the sum of all the data values, right? Add them all up and then divide by the number of data values, right? Divide by how many you have. For example, suppose my data values, now this is just a very small example, we'll get into some questions in the assignment in a second. Suppose my data set is just these values here, 1, 3, 6, and uh, 10. Then the mean of this data set is just you know the sum of all the data values in the numerator 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 and then I divide that by you know how many there are there are four data values okay so that this is uh, 20 right? 20 is the sum divided by 4 is 5 right? the mean the mean is five. Um, so you, and that's like the center of the data, or a a measure of the center of the data. Now some notation for the mean. Right? Uh, the mean of a population, and we'll see this a lot more in later sections. Uh, this doesn't come up, I think, at all in this first assignment. But just to get it out there because you are going to see it a lot in the rest of the course. Uh, the mean of a population, remember the population was you know, the entirety of what you're trying to study, is usually represented by a Greek letter. Uh, the Greek letter mu, it looks like a little u when I draw it, but this is the Greek letter mu, m m u mu, or mu, I've heard people call it mu before too. So if you ever see this Greek letter mu, it usually is representing the mean value of an entire population. Whereas the mean of a sample, remember a sample is just some sub-collection from a population, right? just a smaller group taken from a population. The mean of a sample will be represented by some letter 
usually x. It's not always x, but it'll usually be represented by some letter with a bar over it. This is, and this is the way you would say this is x bar. All right. And it could be x bar, y bar, z bar, k, you know, p bar, whatever. Um, it all depends on what you call the data values. You know, if I if I said that this set of data here was set x, right, say that say it was called I called it set x. Then the mean of set x, if it, if it was a sample, right, let's say set or sample x, um, then I would say that the the mean of set x or the mean of sample x was x bar. Right, the the mean value of five would be the the value x bar. All right, so just some notation that you're going to come across um, later in the course. All right. Now this particular objective I'm working on is you know still finding the mean, but when you know you're not seeing all the data written out in front of you, you're you're seeing the data written in a frequency table. So you got to really be careful. All right, let me show you what let me show you what I mean. All right, so let me go to the next uh, question here. So here's, and uh, I'll write this up on a piece of paper and, and show you how, how we go about finding the mean from a frequency table. So remember, the data values are in this first column, right? There are twos, fours, fives, and eights in my set of data. The frequency, these are not data. Frequencies are just how many times the data shows up in my data set. Okay, so that means there's three twos and two fours and two fives and one eight. Right, so let's go to a separate piece and find the mean of this set of data. Okay, so I've written out that data set here, that frequency table. Now, again, what this means when you look at a frequency table, if I'm looking at this frequency table, the data set is there's a two and there are, you know, there are three twos, right? The frequency tells you how many of, of that data, the, the data value there are. There are two fours. There are two fives. And there's one eight. Right, so th this is the data set I'm looking at. So then the mean value, again, is the sum of all of these. Now, instead of writing 2 plus 2 plus 2, because they're the same value, remember 2 plus 2 plus 2, when you, when you add the same thing to itself, you're really doing multiplication. That's the same as 2 times 3. All right, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 2 times 3. So this is the sum of the twos. And you're going to see that what I'm doing is I'm going to take every data value and multiply it by its frequency. And we're going to add those up. So that's 2 plus 2 plus 2, or 2 times 3, plus 4. Again, I don't want, I'm not going to write 4 plus 4. I don't want to repeat things. 4 plus 4 is simply 4 times 2. Again, just the data value times its frequency. Plus 5 plus 5. Well, again, five, I don't want to repeat things. Uh, 5 plus 5 is simply 5 times 2. Again, the data value times its frequency. And then plus 8. All right. So there's the numerator. All right. I'm going to take the sum of all the data values. The denominator is how many values do I have? Now, again, People get confused. They think, oh, there's one, two, three. There are four data values. No, they're not. There are three, you know, five, seven. There are eight data values. You need to add up the frequencies. Right? That's what goes in the denominator. Right? The, the frequencies, how many values are there? And that's, again, add those up there. And you can see it in my data set here. There are eight values. Alright, so numerator, we have a, you know, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 10, 
right? 5 times 2 is 24, plus 8 is 32. So the sum of all these data values would be 32, and divided by 8, and you know, 8 goes into 32 nicely. That's just simply 4. All right, so this would be the mean of this set of data, the set of data represented by this frequency table. So going back to the, the actual problem here, into just you know just the number four. It was a nice whole number. And again, they go through the explanation, numerator, sum of all the data values, right? You just take every data value times its frequency and add them up. And the denominator is the sum of the frequencies, right? How many values there are. Now that was a frequency table. That was a frequency table where every data value was, you know, just every every single row, right, represented every single row represented a single data value. Uh, this was just two, four, five, eight, right? Every row represents a single value. But what if you have, you know, we've seen examples of these as well in our histogram making. Remember when you when we were making histograms, we had a lower class limit and an upper class limit. Every single row represented a range of values. Right? So that's what we're doing here is uh, how do you find the mean from a group? Now you can watch again. I'm not doing, I'm not watching a video within my video. But let me show you how to find the, uh, now you're not going to be able to find the exact mean. All right, notice how they're saying here, given the frequency table, what is the estimated, estimated mean? Because remember, that this is grouped data. All right, you know, see how the first row, the data values range from 4 to 9. So, and there are 5 of them. Now, that doesn't mean you know what the values are. They could all be 4, all 5 of the values could be 4. All five of the values could be nine. You know, you could have an eight, an eight, a seven, a seven, and a four. Right? And you don't. You don't know what these five values are. All you know is that these five values are from four to nine. Same thing for the second row. Right? There are four values in the data that range from ten to fifteen. You don't know what these four values are but you do know that they range from 10 to 15. All right, there's four of them. And there are two values that are somewhere from 16 to 21. All right, again, because you don't know the exact data, like with the previous table I did, because you don't know the exact data, you're going to have to estimate the mean. And uh, here's how. Okay, so I've written out that table we have the intervals of data and then how many values of the data are in that range. Okay, so you've seen this already. Now how do we estimate the mean of the data? Well, for this grouped data like this, where the data, the rows are, are represented by intervals, ranges, going to use the midpoints of the classes right, of those data intervals. Right. So over here I'm going to do a little make a make a separate column where I put the midpoint the midpoints. All right, what what we're trying to do is represent this interval with a single value and then it'll, then it will make it like the previous problem I did All right, this problem here I'm trying to represent the intervals with a single value so we think that hey you know values from 4 to 9 what's what's a good representative of the values from 4 to 9 so you think what's the value exactly in the middle right the midpoint now to find the midpoint of a class, can't spell, M-I-D. To find the midpoint of a class, you take the lower class limit, the lower limit, plus the upper limit, 
right, you just find the average of those two limits then divide by two. Okay. So for this first class here, uh, the midpoint is four plus nine, then divided by two, that's 13, divided by two, um, that would be 6.5, all right, six and a half. And then I would do the same for this, you know, uh, that's 25 divided by two, all right, 10 plus 15, that's 12.5 for the midpoint of the second group of data. And then for the third group of data, you know, it's 37, 16 plus 21, 37 divided by two, it's 18.5. Right? And then using, you know, now I'm using this, 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 this column of the midpoints of the data and their frequencies right? and, and es estimating the mean the same, the same way now using this column and this column, the same way I found the mean here. You take each value, each midpoint, multiply by its frequency, add those up, and divide by the sum of the frequencies, divide by how many values there are. Okay, so the mean, the mean data value is you know, approximately, you know, I'm using a wavy equal sign, because again, these are, these are estimates of the values in, the, in, the, in these ranges. So I'd have 6.5 plus 6.5 plus, you know, five times. So 6.5 times five plus, and then I'd add, be adding 12 and a half four times. So plus 12.5 four times, right, times four. Plus, and then I'd be adding 18 and a half twice. Right? So plus 18.5 times two, and then all this, right, all this, that, that's the sum of the data, or the approximate sum of the data, divided by how many data values are there, and that's when you're adding up the frequencies, right, five plus four plus two is um, 11, all right, there are 11 values. All right, now I'm gonna punch this in a calculator, and we'll get approximately, uh, Okay, equals and be right back with that result. Okay, so uh, I'll bring up the calculator I, work I did, right? Just added up those values, got 119.5. Right, do you see the 119.5? And then divided by 11, got 10.8636363636. Um, and looking back at the assignment, the problem, all the all the choices are to the nearest hundredth, the second decimal place. So to the second decimal place that rounds to ten point eight six. Alright. So I got approximately ten point eight six is the mean value of the data represented by this this grouped fr grouped data frequency table. Alright, so again if you're given grouped data with classes, ranges Find the midpoints of those classes, and then you know multiply each midpoint by how many times it, it, it sh you know it, it it appears, and and then add those up, and divide by you know the sum of the frequencies, divide by how many there are, to approximate the mean. Right, so back here, approximately 10.86. There we go. And again, the explanation, see they're using the midpoints. Right. Find the sum, you know, the sum of the midpoints right, multiplied by their frequencies. And then divide by 11. Okay. All right, so now I'm into a, a different objective. Now, we've talked about the mean. Uh, you've talked, you've seen the median already. Uh, there are no problems in this homework that I have for you where you have to find the median because you've already done that in a previous section. Um, but you've already seen what the median is, right? That's the value in the middle, right? It's a measure of center. It has half the data above it, half the data below it. Uh, I haven't talked about the mode, right? So I'll talk about the mode here real quick. Well, actually, I think the mode just comes up in more instruction. 
Right. Now this, this objective is determine whether the mean, the median, or the mode is the best measure of center for a data set. Right. Uh, so you got a video there, but let me let me just go over the definitions. Uh, the mean you've already seen, right, the sum of all the items in a list divided by the number of items in that list. The median you've already seen, a number that splits a data set in half, right, with one half smaller and one half larger, or you know, it's the center or middle value of a data set. Uh, the mode is the number or numbers that occurs most often in a data set. So the number, the, the data values with the highest frequencies. And again, you've probably heard the word mode before. And we've talked about outliers as well. Right? In a previous section, talked about using the interquartile range, right? That Q3 minus Q1 and you know adding one and a half of it to Q3 and subtracting one and a half of it from Q1 and Anything outside those new values were, were considered potential outliers. Anything that's incredibly large, right, or incredibly small compared to the rest of the data, right, values that are different from the rest of the values in a data set. Um, I'll tell you right now, the mean, you know, the, the, again, the, the, the objective is determining which one's the best to use to describe the center of a set of data. The mean is best when you have you know, numerical data and there are no outliers right so all the data is pretty closely grouped together and there are no outliers the mean would be is what we're usually going to do in those cases to rep represent the center the median right the median is best when you have numerical data but there are outliers right the reason for that is because you know outliers, you know, have a have a big effect on the mean. If you have a very very large value, that's away from most of the data, or a very very small value, that's away from most of the data, those values will throw the mean off quite a bit, but they won't throw the median off very much. They'll just shift it over by one value. So the median is best. When there are, when there are outliers, the mean is best. When there aren't outliers, the mode is usually best when the data is not numerical. When the data is categorical or you know qualitative, talking about categories, words, labels, descriptions. You know, usually the mode, the the, the value or the, the 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 label that appears most often will be a, a good representative of the set, of uh, the center of the set. All right, so we're not going to see the mode too much being the best, because um, for the most part in this course, we're going to be dealing with numerical or you know quantitative data. And so moving on, moving on to the, the question here. So given the following list of values, is the mean or the median likely to be a better measure of center of the data set? Now you could, all right, um, you could put this list into your calculator, find the first and third quartiles and, you know, use the interquartile range to identify possible outliers. In fact, let me do that. Right, so I'm going to pause, I'm going to come back to you in a second here with uh, this list entered and the quartiles found and all that. Okay, so I brought the calculator up here and you see I've entered this list of 10 values. Now if I get out of here, let me, let me show you. You've seen me do this before. Right, you can calculate, go stat over to calculate and then you know it's just a single list of value, you know, there's one data set here so I'm just going to enter on one variable stats and I have all my data down list 1 and there's no frequency list, right? So then calculate. All right, so you're seeing the mean here. Remember I mentioned that X bar before? Right. So 
So remember, uh, x bar is the mean. Right? So they say x bar is you know approximately or equal to, or equal to 30.6. The the mean value of those those the, that set of data is 30.6. Right, again, the x bar means mean. But if you scroll down, remember you get the five, that five number summary. I'm interested in finding potential outliers. So what you know, Q1, the first quartile was it, for this set of data is 27, and Q3, right, the third quartile is uh, 30, and the median, right, the median is 28.5. And they're and they're asking us, you know, which which of these, the mean or the median, would be a better representation of the of the data set. I remember I said this out loud earlier, and I'll write I'll just write it I'll write it here. The mean is best with no outliers. The median will be best when there are outliers. Because the median is not affected by outliers the way the mean is. Alright, so I've got the first quartile, the third quartile. So let me find this, you know, remember that interquartile range was, you know, Q3 minus Q1 would just be 3, right, 30 minus 27. And then to figure out, you know, potential outliers, I take Q, you know, the third quartile and add one and a half interquartile ranges. Well, this would just be 30 plus four and a half, that's 34.5. Right, so any value above this, any value above 34.5 would be considered an outlier. And then Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, that'd be 27 minus 4.5, that'd be 22.5. And anything below 22.5 uh, would be considered an outlier. So 22.5 to 34.5 are fine. Anything outside those considered an outlier. Now let me see. Let me move this back here and look at your values. Look at the values in the, in this in this data set here. Now nothing's below 22.5, but see that 53 that I just put a highlight on. 53. 53 is above 34 and a half. You know, and you can probably, you know, again, you could have told me this without, let me move this up here and get rid of it. I mean, you could have told me that 53 was an outlier without doing all that. Um, if you look at all the values, right, most of them are, you know, from 25 to 31, from 26 to 31. You know, most of them are in that range. But then there's this 53, which is way out there. Um, so because there's an outlier present, the median will be a better measure of center than the mean. Right? The mean is it, it mean, the mean is very high, very affected by outliers. So I'm going to say the median would be the best uh, measure of center. Again, they go through the explanation. They're talking about 53 being a potential outlier. All right. There's another one with it. Now this time it has a frequency list. So again, given the it's the same objective, given the following frequency table of values, you know, is the mean or median likely to be a better measure of the center of the data? All right. Now look at the values. 32, the values are, you know, there's two 32s, so you have 32, 32, 33, 33, 33, you know, six 34s, two 35s, 
two 36s and a 37, all the data values are very close together. They're all pretty well lumped together. Now you could go through and do the same thing I did in the previous problem, but this, this time with a frequency list. Right, you would add the frequency list in there. Find the, you know, and find the first quartile, the third quartile, what's the interquartile range, and then add one and a half of that to the third quartile, subtract one and a half of the interquartile range from the first quartile, and try to identify, you know, possible outliers. You can do all that if you wish. It's just, you know, try to use some common sense, you know, try to use, your, you know, just think about it a little bit. All these are in the 30s. They're all pretty well grouped together. Um, so I would say that the mean, I, I'm going to say that, you know, there probably aren't any outliers. There's no extremely large value or some extreme value that's much smaller than these. So in that case, when there are no outliers in a set of numerical data, the mean will be, you know, our, will consider the best measure of center. Right. So I see no very large or very small values in the list, right? No, no potential outliers. And you don't have to go through the interquartile range stuff. Alright. So now I'm just simply on an objective that says find the mean of a set of data. And uh, this is one of those with a with a with a histogram here, it looks like. Now one of those where you have to move some stuff around, you know, you have to actually move the mean. So let's read this and look at the chart, look at the, look at the graph. An office manager would like to find the mean number of emails sent by employees during a one hour period. She collects data from 34 employees, right? So 34 is how many data values, that's going to be the denominator, right? Uh, when I calculate the mean. The graph shows the frequency uh, for the number of emails sent during this time period. Find the mean number of emails for the 34 employees. All right, so this is just like our, our frequency list. Uh, our, uh, I'm actually going to write up a little right next to this. Right, let's pull this up here, and I'll draw. I'll make a little frequency table for this. Right, and it'll be just like finding the mean we had earlier. So we could have you know number of emails. All right sent and the frequency right? how many people sent that many emails right? so how many people sent one email well three of them right? you see the height of that bar is at uh, three how many people sent two emails you know, six how many people sent three emails uh, not uh, three right? how many people sent four emails nine how many people sent five emails? Uh, six. No. Yeah, six. Look at the bar. The bar above five. How many people sent six emails? Uh, four people did that. How many people sent seven emails in the last hour? Uh, three people did that. Right. And so remember how you find the mean in this case. It's this. You know, this is the data. This is not data. This is just telling you how many. So I'd have, you know, 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 1 times 3, plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, you know, 6 twos, 2 times 6, plus 3 times 3, plus 4 times 9, plus 5 times 6, plus 6 times 4, plus, you know, 7 times 3. That That's the sum uh, you know, that would give me the total number of emails sent by these 34 people in that hour. And then for the average, right, I would divide by 34. That's where the sum of the frequencies comes in. All right, now I can punch this in if I wished. All right, um, but let me show you on the calculator uh, how to do this as well. All right, so I'm going to move this window again. I'm going to move this over the graph, actually. And I'm actually, you know, there's an objective later that talks about using the calculator. I'm just going to go and do that right now. So I'm going to enter these lists. Right? I'm going to enter the list of emails down list one and, you know, the, how many of the frequencies down list two and show you this. 
Alright, so I've got the calculator up, and hopefully you can see I've entered the lists 1 through 7 emails and the, all the frequencies. Again, if I want if I want the mean, go back to the main screen and hit you know stat, go over to calc. Now I know I know there are two columns, but only one of the columns represents the actual data, right? The number of emails. Again, I've said this before, frequencies are not data. They're not our data values. So I'm only going to be doing one variable stats again, one variable stats. Uh, I had the numbers of emails, the actual data, down list one, L1, and then the frequency list, you know, how many times do each of those occur? That was down L2, so I hit second two. And then calculate, right. and here's the mean. Right. So this mean is approximately uh, you know, all the data is to one decimal, you know, to a whole number, so we should round to the nearest tenth, right, one decimal place after. So approximately 3.97, which is approximately 4.0, if I round to the nearest tenth. Alright, 3.97. Um, and look, see, see how it says n equals 34, right? It counted up the frequencies. There were 34 people that were, you know, asked how many emails did you send or whatever. Right. There were 34 people in this in this sample. Alright, so let me get rid of this and move this back here and get rid of that. Alright. So it says round to the nearest end, right? Four, four point, and it says drag the purple thing to, to where the mean is, right? So I remember this is going to be kind of sensitive, but 4.0, right? It was approximately 4.0, and you see how the mean is kind of under the bulk of the data. You know, you look at, you see the shape of the data in the graph. The mean is kind of where the bulk of the data lies, right? You know, it usually shows up around where the where the heavy part is in the graph, the you know, more of the high bars. Yeah, wonderful, and it goes through again the the way I the way I calculated that. No, I, I didn't. I didn't do it by hand. Right, I did it with a calculator. But I would. Be, it would ended up being 135 divided by 34. All right. Okay. Great. All right. All right. So I, I've already talked about the mode. Now this is a new objective, so I will go into more instruction just to really show. You know, again, you can read this on your own. But the mode is another measure of the center of data. The mode is the most frequent value, right? the value that shows up the most times. Uh, be careful though, there can be more than one mode in a data set, as long as those values have the same frequency, right? meaning they occur the same number of times, and that their frequency is the greatest. Right? So if if no frequency is higher than anybody else's, right? if there is no greatest frequency, then there's no mode. But if like two values have the highest frequency, and then the rest have lower frequencies, then they call it bimodal, all right? Two modes. Um, so yeah, so they read through examples here. Pretty sim. It's pretty simple. I feel just counting frequencies. So the data example, the data below are the monthly average high temperatures for New York City. You know, there's 12 of them. What is the mode? There's two 40s. You know, uh, there's a 48. There's 161. There's 172, 178, 284s. Right, there were two 40s and two 84s. 76, there's only one of those. There's only 165, only 154, and only 142. So this is what they call bimodal. Right? 40 appears twice, and 84 appears twice, and that's the, the high, those are the highest frequencies. Right? Everything else appears one time. So it's a bimodal set. 40 and 84 are both considered the mode uh, for this set, it's considered you know, bimodal. Okay. So again, pretty simple stuff, I feel. This is clearly probably, you know, seven appears four times. 
So the mode is, you know, seven stingrays, a stingray spotted during a snorkeling trip. Which one appears the most often? And they, they made a little frequency list here, clearly seven. Again, I've mentioned this before. You can be, you can have a single mode, you can have two modes, but you can also have no mode. If none of the frequencies are higher, you know, if, if there is no highest frequency, if everything shows up the same amount of times, then there's no mode. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, so here's a mean of a, of a set of data. All right. So uh, I'm going to get back with you on this one. This is exactly like the, the one problem where, you know, it's uh, find the mean number of dairy products purchased for the 53 customers, round to the nearest tenth. So, you know, six people bought one product, eight people bought two products, 14 bought three, uh, seven bought four. So I'm going to do the same thing where I make a list. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Right, uh, one through seven, and then their frequencies, and punch it in, get the, get the mean. Okay, so I punched in, you know, the list one through seven for the numbers of products. That was the actual data. And then all these frequencies at the tops of the bars here, right? The 6, 8, 14, 7, 5, 3, 10. I put that as a second list, a frequency list, and then did the one variable stats in the calculator. Rounds to, it goes 3.867. Rounding that to the nearest tenth would be 3.9. Right, so again, this is one of those where I have to move the, move the mean here over to 3.9. Oops, passed it up. There we go. Nope, see, uh, sensitive, uh, 3.9. Right, submit. So again, it's the same as the earlier problem with the with the bar graph, that, uh, with the histogram that I showed you, so I'm not going to you know, do all that again. Right. Okay, and then you go through the explanation again here. Right. Okay, um, another mean of the set of data. And it's another one of these. All right, now look at how incredibly symmetrical this is. All right, so honestly, I don't feel like I'm going to need to <laughs> make a list, uh, make the lists here. You know, he's trying to count. This guy is trying to find the mean number of sweaters bought or sweaters produced from the 17 production lines. I'll tell you right now. Look at how incredibly symmetrical. This is it's one, two, three on the left, then five in the middle, three, two, one on the right. I'm telling you right now, the mean's going to be four. Right. I'm just using the fact that this is perfectly symmetrical. Right. It's going to be right smack dab in the middle. All right. Now again, I, I'll bring the calculator up. You could punch in, you know, the one through seven sweaters in one column, and then all these frequencies. But again, I'll, I'm telling you right now, if a, if a graph is perfectly symmetrical like this, the mean will be smack dab in the middle. All right, and let's see. Okay, and like I told you, you see uh, here the. I, I entered the list one through seven, all those frequencies in a frequency list, did the one variable stats, and see x, x bar is four. Right, like I said, right smack dab in the middle. But you know, not every graph you see is you know symmetrical. Right, this one just happened to be. Okay, um, moving on here. Looks like we got another find the mean of a set of data. All right, so one more of these again I'm just going to now this is not symmetrical. But again I'm going to I'm going to think I think that the mean will be again around the bulk of the data, right? So I think the mean's going to probably around here uh, somewhere around 4 or 5. See where the bulk of the data is, the heavy part. So again I'm going to enter this. Now this is this guy's finding the average number of hats sold or produced hats owned by 25 res students, right? So the sum of all these frequencies should be 25, and we're counting the number of hats that each of these 25 people sold. So again, I'm going to enter list one through seven, and then these frequencies find and have the cal and do the have the calculator find the mean. 
All right, so again, I, had, I did that with the lists, uh, the, the list of data, the hat and the numbers of hats in the frequency lists, and it came up 4.48, which would round to 4.5. And again, like I suspected, you know, the data is somewhere between four and five here. You know, where, where the bulk, where the bulk, where the heavy part of the graph looks. You know, where the most of the most of the values, most of the heavy, the thick bars seem to be. Right, the the tall bars. Submit that. Get that out of the way. Alright. Alright. Uh, this one's just finding the mode. Alright, so I'm just going to hit the instrument. You know how to find the mode now. Like Clearly, it would be 13. Alright, there are three 13s and fewer of other things. Right, the most, the most frequent is the 13. And you can make a frequency table if you wish, and you know which one has the highest frequency. All right, another mode. Uh, just just glancing at this, looks like seven is the most frequent value here. So seven T-shirts purchased, you know, by customers, the most frequent value. And very, very easy. The mode. Pardon me. The mode questions. Uh, already shown you this a bunch now you know what's the mean value and here's how many times they appear so again you can do the calculator thing enter this list and enter this frequency list and then do that one variable stats or you know what I was showing you by hand earlier I'm just gonna put in the instructor cheat right, so the, the, the average value here is 10 minutes and you've seen me do this I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do every single problem if I've already done something similar and read the explanation. All right, and I've done one of these already too. All right. Now, uh, remember for these group data, you know, when you have intervals like this, you're going to be doing the midpoints. So on the calculator, you could enter a list of midpoints. You know, the midpoint between one and three is two, then between four and six is five, and then between seven and nine is eight, ten. And, you know. So you have two, five, eight, eleven enter that list of midpoints, then enter the frequencies and have one variable stats, calculate the mean, and it says round to two decimal places again. I, you've seen me do this already with group, group data. I'm just gonna put the cheat in and you know, 5.77. And you can read through the explanation. See they're using the midpoints, right? midpoints. And again, determine which I already I went over this before too. Right? Whether the mean, median, or mode is the best measure. Again, here look at all these are in the 20s, 20s, high 20s, low 30s, except for 56. Right? I'm going to guess that 56 is an outlier, and outliers have a, a huge effect on the mean. So the mean would not be a good measure of center. When there are outliers in a set of numerical data, the median is the best measure of center. And again, because of that 56. Right, same kind of question. Now this one, definitely the median. Because um, like there's one, tw there's a 21, you know, 21 is more, look, all the data, most of the data is down here from 35 to 41. And then there's clearly one value that's far away. So again, I'd say the median here because of the, the outlier, the potential outlier 21. Right. And then the last part, the last objective is just doing this stuff with the calculator, right, which I've already shown you. Right, let's calculate the mean, median. Now the mode, you, you I'll, I'll show you how to, you know, there is no mode feature on the calculator. Uh, you know that one variable stats that I've shown you. You know that shows you the mean, the median, the quartiles, all that. Uh, there is no mode. So I think the quickest way to find the mode, and they describe it. If you if you click on more instruction, they do describe how to find the mode. Um, you know, a, 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 well, there, again, there's no mode button. There's no mode uh, function in your calculators. But if you put the list of data in order from least to greatest, 
right? Which you which you've seen me do before as well, right? You know, you hit that sort ascending on the calculator. If you sort your list of data from least to greatest, uh, then you can very easily count yourself, you know, how many times things appear. All right. All right, so let me show you what I mean. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this list of data. These are you know, baseball player batting averages. And we're asked to find the mean, the median, and the mode, and you know, round your answers to three decimal places. Be, again, please read through the problem carefully and read you know, what do they want at the end there. All right, so I'll, be, I'll pop the calculator up when I'm done with that. Okay, so you're seeing here I have entered these 10 these 10 batting averages on my calculator in list 1. So again, if, uh, again, the mean and median are easy. And I'll get out of there, just go stat, over to calc, one variable stats, uh, I'll get rid of this frequency list, right? there's no frequency list this time, just list 1 with the data. And there we go, the, you see x bar on top, that's the mean, so 0 0.2688, but they want us to round to three decimal places. So the mean batting average here is 269.269. 0 0.269. Uh, the median. I scroll down. Remember you can scroll down to, it says MED. MED, median, 0 0.272. And that's already to three decimal places. So 0 0.272 I'll enter. All right, now there again, the mode, right? There is no mode here in all these values. So how do I find the mode? All right, so let me get out of this. Let me quit that. Remember how to sort in ascending order? I go stat, the number two there, sort A, sort in ascending order, and then what? What? What do you want? What list? Well, that was list one, so I hit second one. There, I sort list one in ascending order. Hit enter, and it's going to say done. And then I go back to the menu, stat, hit stat, then edit. And you see now my list is written in in, in order from least to greatest. All right, and if you'd like, you now you can count over here. You know, there's a uh, just one of these two point uh, point two one twos. There's one of these point two four threes. There's one of these, you know, if you want, you don't have to do that. You can just count in your head. 1.25, there's only 1.262. And there's a point, uh, now there's two of these point. You know, there's a, that's the first 0.272 I'm seeing. That's the second 0.272 I'm seeing. And then that's the first 0.277. The first 0.285 the first point two nine three the first point three two two right and then you go back and like hey there were you know there were there were see there was there was one there was two there were two of these point two seven twos so point two seven two zero point two seven two was the mode right the one that appeared the most Again, you don't have to make this this second list here like I did. You can just count them on your own. You know, just count them in your head and see which ones appeared the most. But when they're in order from least to greatest, it's easy to see what what ones are appearing more than others. So I think that's the quickest way to find the mode um, on on your calculator, because right? again, there is no mode feature. Now they show you here how to find the mean and median separately if you want. You can find the mean and median separately with your calculator. I just like doing that one variable stats and it gives me the mean and median in the same screen, right? I just gotta scroll down. And that's really the and the rest of the problems are like this. You know, find the mean, median, and mode with your calculator the same way I just showed you. Right, so I'm just gonna have these cheat. Uh, until I get to the end. Uh, again, they go through the explanation, how to use a calculator. And here's another one. You know, what's the mean, median, and mode? I'm going to do the cheat here. It's the same problem over and over again. Right, I think I got maybe two more of these.
and that's it. Okay, so you have the mean. You know, add up all the values, divide by how many there are. The median, you know, as you've seen this in previous sections, put them in order from least to greatest. And then what's the value in the middle? All right, what cuts off, there's a lower half and an upper half. And the mode is just the most frequent value. Right, and you can have more than one mode, as you saw. And uh, also, remember, the, the mean is the best measure of center when there are no outliers. The median will be the best measure of center when there are outliers. And the mode will be the best measure of center usually for categorical data or qualitative data. So you didn't see that too much here, or, or at all. You didn't see that at all here. Because, um, again, for the most part, we're going to be dealing with numbers, numerical, you know, qu quantitative data. Okay, so that's it for section 2.5's newton Alta homework here, and uh, hopefully this was informative. And again, you're not going to see exactly the same problems in exactly the same order that I did, but the objectives are the same, the types of problems you're going to see are the same, how you do them would be the same. So hopefully you can use this video of mine as a, as a nice little guide for you while you work through the assignment uh, on your own. Okay? And, uh, of course, if you have any questions, let me know, and thank you very much for watching.